Well, hello again. It's Ben, Dash 9 Computing, and um, today I want to talk about, a, I want to create a controller, just a Bluetooth controller that I can use actually with my laptop to play some arcade games so I don't have to use the keyboard. And I have a ESP32, a couple of them. Um, one thing I am realizing is this one does not have Bluetooth, and this is a great one that I wanted to use. It's a uh, Adafruit ESP32 Feather. It's an older one, it's a S2. The S3 has Bluetooth, so I may end up buying one, but it's got a little screen on there, and I thought it'd be cool if I could, you know, project, I don't know, the game name or some, something, just something on the screen, it'd be kind of cool. But I can't use that one. I'm gonna end up using my, um, my LilyGo one, which is not great for this project. I'll go into that in more detail, but I have, um, I got some buttons, you know, little arcade buttons, some, GPIO wires, it's like show and tell. Little, some wires and uh, a joystick, and yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be cool. You know, fun little project. I just wanna get Bluetooth working. You know, I'm not gonna install any games on the ESP32, which you could do. Uh, I guess also if you expanded it out to have a uh, SD card, you could probably run the whole shebang there. It may not run really fast is the issue. Um, <clears throat> so, Let's, uh, let's get rolling, shall we? I just wanted to show some of the code really quickly. Um, let me make it, can I make this a little bigger for us? Yeah, there we go. So this one is just for the multi buttons. This is where I had a left, right button and a fire button or action button, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And on the ESP32, it's quite simple. You just include the Arduino H library and the BLE gamepad library. That's, that's the Bluetooth. Uh, declare the pins that you've plugged into. BLE gamepad, BLE gamepad. Does it give a, a sometimes it tells you oh, what class. Okay, great. <clears throat> and the variable. Um, and the button state initially should be at high, which is off, I believe. And um, so bin put, so here you say um, button one for pull up, void in your setup, and then in the loop, you say it's, you know, if connected, um, button one, two, three. If the state is low, you know, button one, button two, I'm sorry, button one, otherwise do button one. And then you just, um, previous state equals uh, current state. <laughs> That's it. So you're basically just saying, you know, hey, um, if it detects the button press, change the state. Now that's just for buttons. So when I did the joystick and buttons, you have to treat joysticks differently. <clears throat> so I, I did a defining and I just made the names a little different. Same pins, 982. Um, and again, you know, initialize, but did button state previous. Here's the setup. So pin mode, again, same thing. And then you start it if it's connected. So here we jump into joystick. So you digitally read button pin, and then there's joystick left and right. Uh, we're just sort of initializing that. And then here's a uh, button press one for left and release button two. Button two, you have to release them. Otherwise it doesn't know to trigger them, does that make sense? I'm not really describing it well. How should I describe this? So press release, press release, and then you have to release both at the end because you're clicking it on and then releasing it. You have to make sure you're not triggering them both, if that makes sense. And then the button is simply on off. Very simple. Okay, here we have my little LilyGo uh, T-Pico C3 with the ESP32 and the Raspberry Pi RP2040. But what I'm looking at is this long string of pins here. And um, I didn't want to do any welding, so I try, I'm going to try something new. I bought these from, Vil, I think it's Vilpus or Vilpus. Uh, and they're these hammerhead uh, pins for the RP Pico. Uh, but they work on any ESP32 that has these little holes. And basically, I'll take one out. Um, instead of soldering these pins in, it has like a, what looks like the, the eye of a needle on the end. And we'll see how this goes, but you basically put it on there carefully and hammer them in. I don't know if you can see the little holes in the center, but right at the base there, they will, you know, kind of click in. Okay, well, let's, let's give it a go. I don't know. I'll probably break the board right in half. Classic Ben, but whatever. You know, it's, it's part of the fun. And, you know, honestly, this board, I'm not really using this board much and it's not it's certainly not the right board for this application and I'll explain more about that 
So let's make sure these line up and fit in. Looks good. Okay, now, huh. so I want to put some wood underneath here, but I don't want to put this like right just flat on the wood. There's a screen there too. There's a little TFT that I don't want to mar up. So I'm going to try to fold this over a little. I don't know. Let's see what we can do here. And we want to hit this evenly. So you know, I'm going to take this down here. Look at this block of wood. It's kind of a softer wood. I'm hoping that will help kind of cushion the blow and at least distribute the force even is what I'm looking for. Okay, here we go. Oh, this does feel super shaky. That's not good. Let me let me work on this a little bit more before I start hammering this little board. Okay, that feels a little more stable. They sell a little jig for this, but honestly, I was feeling cheap. And this thing was, one thing with that uh, brand, that Villa, I'll, I'll put the link in, um, free shipping, it was quick, and this was like three or four bucks. So, you know, kind of figured like, how bad could it be? We'll find out. Uh, they're also sold on Adafruit's website, but here goes. Let me just do a little check. Okay, that didn't do much. It's too wobbly, too wibbly wobbly. Okay, let's try. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, I just bent them, that's all I did. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Nyer. Okay. All right, we can fix that, I maybe. Hmm. Time for the pliers. Oh, I nailed it in. <laughs> That's fantastic. Does this just fly it far? Yeah, ah! <laughs> Hey, good, I installed it. <laughs> God, this is great. This is going swimmingly. Jeez um, Louise, this is, I told you it was a soft wood, but wow. <gasps> I broke it. Yep, yeah, look at that. Chip just came off. That's the end of this board, unless I have a soldering gun. Well, there you go. Okay, I'm glad I did this with one I don't like all that much, but I must say I am a little bummed. And I guess that's that's what happens. Well, I guess it's one way to take a chip off if you don't want to use the, uh, the soldering gun. Okay, well... Oh my god, you're not going to believe this. I am... I don't know what to say. Oh my God. The thing powers on, I'm not kidding. And it works, no joke, I can't believe it. So here's some other stupid stuff I did that I don't recommend, but you see that little, um, the pin? What I did is I took the larger pin, the like the whole row of them, and I broke them into individual ones and I pounded them in with, an, uh, with alligator clips. At that point I was like, ah, the board doesn't work anyways. I pounded them in. The freaking thing works. I even tested it out. Um, dear Lord, so let me just put this this jumper back on and I have a, I hooked up a, I've got a joystick hooked up, which is just left and right. So it's, you'll notice that this wire's not hooked up at all, these the up and down, but left and right and I have one button. And part of that is, like I said earlier, I'm using kind of a bad board for this. Remember this is the ESP32 and the um, Raspberry Pi in there. So there's the Raspberry Pi chip. So the, the Raspberry Pi apparently gets all um, the other GPIOs except for these three where the orange are plugged in, that's it. And this one's coming out. It only gets these three, and then these three are just grounds. It has plenty of grounds, which I guess is kind of cool, but really I'd rather have GPIOs, and what you usually do is you daisy chain the grounds together for low, you know, these are low power things I'm using, but the Bluetooth is only hooked up to the ESP32. So this is a terrible ESP32 to use to make a game system because one, two, three. Left is one, right is two, button is three, that's it. I really wanted a second button, so I really need to get a whole different board for this, but I just, this, let's, let's look at this as a proof of concept that the Bluetooth works and all that. And I will show you how it connects and the code and then, um, and uh, was it RetroArch and some games I got working. Right now I just have it running up a battery. So, you know, it's 
quote unquote wireless and I'll make a case for it. But I can't believe that thing works. And by the way, that chip that fell off, I think that's the, uh, the memory chip. That's the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh darn, I, I knew it just a second ago. It was just, I looked it up online. I, I, I just, I'm still in shock. I cannot believe that this thing is working. It, it, for all intents and purposes, it, it should be dead. I mean, I don't know, maybe someone else understands it. But what died was the, um, the SPI memory chip. That's what it was. And the SPI is, um, it's like the flash memory, which is, I thought, incorrectly, where you uploaded your programs to. So apparently we don't need that, or maybe it's only for the Raspberry Pi. I don't think it is, though. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's the one for, for the SP32. Whatever it is, it freaking works. And um, maybe I'll get a soldering kit and just solder that back on, but whatever. I can't believe it. I'm just in, I'm just kind of in shock. I think it's hilarious. All right. Okay, here's the proof. You see that ESP32 BLE gamepad? That is the controller. I kid you not. There she be. Amazing, right? Amazing. All right, so here is RetroArch.com. Um, RetroArch may look familiar if you've ever used RetroPie. It's um, kind of part of installed as part of that. It's basically what it, uh, holds your emulators like MAME or NES or whatever. Um, I like it, don't love it exactly. I find it a little odd to use. It takes a little while and in this project I created the remote control and you know the different buttons and things and then I added ROMs and I did some things and long story short I ended up having to reinstall it because I just got so lost down a rabbit hole it was quicker just to start over. That may be me, but I find it to be a little tricky sometimes to use. I'm just going to click on download here, and I downloaded the version for a Mac. The install is easy enough. It's not, you know, not rocket science. But, um, yeah, so uh, I'll, let me show you what it looks like. Here we are in RetroArch. Um, I have modified it a bit so there's not so many um, menu items at the top. I wanted to kind of simplify it, but... To start, the first thing I did, and what you'd probably want to do, is go to Online Updater, and you want to update your cores. And here it's fetching a core list. So there's a lot of different types of cores. I went with Arcade MAME cores, and I may I tried some other cores, but um, for the purposes of this, I don't want to deal with that. And then here you can update them, and uh, it's kind of neat. You can kind of core system file download up later. Like so, while it's doing that, you can do other things. They have other Here's some, I uploaded these cores for MAMES, but it looks, uh, PR Boom, I did that. That is um, the one for the game Doom. So got Doom running, which I'll show you. Uh, content downloader. Okay, so this worked before content downloader. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not the part I was talking about. So here's some, uh, I got the Nintendo Entertainment System as well. So I have some NES games. Uh, that's just settings. Here's the playlist thumbnails updater. Um, I could not, it's strange, the first time I installed it, I got this to work, I downloaded all the thumbnails for everything I wanted. Now it won't do it, and I manually did it by changing the, the names of some of my ROMs to, to work. Kind of a bummer. It just was so easy the first time, I don't know what I did differently. Uh, on, on demand, down. Uh, that's you can set it to download a thumbnail every time you arrow over something. Okay, so here's key stuff. Update core info files, assets, controller profiles, cheats, etc. You're going to want to do all these. Um, it gives you the different um, desktops, which we're looking at right now. The desktop I am using is, and I'm pausing, here it is. It's called uh, XMB. There are other options. I liked XMB the most. I kind of like that blue swavy thing in the back. And you can, like I said, you can change a bunch of options here. Um, it took a little while to kind of get those right. Um, I created a favorites list, and I only selected games. As I mentioned, I have a left, right, and a button. <laughs> so I, I start off with three buttons. Now I have a joystick hooked up. But so I grabbed like Astro Fighter, and I grabbed the screen art, and I also found a spot where you could kind of have, you know, two different screen arts, a screenshot on the right and the actual, um, you know, poster or box art, uh, Astro Invader, uh, Doom, always got to have Doom, Galaga, Galaxian, Joust, Lunar Lander, Moon Cressida, 
Phoenix, love these games. Sega, uh, Saturn. So Satan of Saturn, and then I had to have Satan's Hollow now. Satan's Hollow uses three buttons. Uh, sorry, two buttons. What I may do is map. I'm going to see if I can map both button, both, you know, fire and uh, shield to one button. That way, every time you fire, the shield goes. It, let's call it a, um, you know, a compromise. A Space Invaders, a classic. Uh, Stratavox, I remember this one in the arcade, and then it's kind of fun, Super Mario Brothers. Again, that really is a two-button thing. I, right now I only have jump. Well, what about like fireballs and stuff like that? So, you know, uh, Tapper, just, and I, I it's actually uh, the beer one, but I grabbed the Rook beer one. I thought it was, I don't know why, I thought it was funny. Uh, Tetris, and then Traverse, which is a fun motorcycle game. Again, I remember all these from the arcade. So um, here it also has an option about history, games you've played recently, and some of the, yeah, see how some of them don't have screen art. Um, you can scan directories for ROMs. That was one of the little buggers, too, to kind of know where your ROMs were, scan and pull them in. But uh, here's also, here it is separated by the emulator in question. So I have a lot of MAME ROMs in, on my machine, but I just, I'm not gonna bother fiddling with them all. I almost forgot. I almost forgot to show you where to set up the the, uh, the controller. I'm laughing because that was like kind of the whole point. So um, <clears throat> so here are, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. So I'm at the very top level. I go into settings, input, and here's retropad binds, and then port one controls. You can have multiple ones. And then if we scroll down here, um, here's what I did. I set the uh, so kind of the right button, left button, and <clears throat> fire button. It really doesn't matter. It's going to, you'll see in the code, it's just going to map to GPIOs, and you kind of just pick which one you want. So you don't have to worry so much about it. But on the keyboard, X and A and Z are the, you know, you can use those as well. However, um, I set it as to button 0, 1, and 2. And all you have to do, and I don't want to do it because if I touch it, it seems to break it sometimes. So you hit enter, um, and it says, you know, press the button. And then you push whatever button you want, it detects it, and that's it, it sets it. The end. Pretty simple, as long as you have everything hooked up correctly. Okay, it's time to make our very custom controller. You may have noticed I decided to go with something a little alternative. Uh, I think it's Cookie Monster, and I just thought it'd be funny. Um, I. As I'm going to be moving this to something else, I did buy some wood and I want to make a nicer controller, but as I need to order other stuff. So this is going to be another one of those, you know, proof of concept, just having some fun. Okay. Okay, this isn't the best view, but at least you get an idea. So here's the joystick, here's the button. I'm just gonna load a game here. Let's load, uh, I got some games that are single, you know, well, Doom, but let's load like um, Galaxian, or actually, let's do Space Invaders just because it, it loads quickly. <laughs> and it's old school classic. And it's just left, right, and shoot. Gonna add some credits. Okay, here we go. Okay, so can you see the joystick? I'm gonna move left and right. So right, and then here's the button. Pew, pew, pew. So there we go. She works. Bluetooth, wireless, all that goodness. So um, again, like I said, I'm limited and I really wanna have more buttons. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to uh, get a different controller going here, but I'm, I'm still just, how, how do you hammer something? I mean, I was merciless with this thing, honestly, really quite merciless. And even putting these pins in, I was just hitting them with the, you know, with like a, I mean, literally, I was smashing them in. Oh, 
smashing them in with this. Just like, ah, at this point, who cares? Just sort of bashing them in. Yeah, put it in there. I can't believe it. It connects to Arduino IDE and everything. So there you go. I, I don't know what to say other than what? <laughs> um, again, the wrong application for this. And I've had to rebuild this several times um, because every time I'd like, I was trying to get this, uh, this has a screen built in. I was trying to get the R, uh, the Raspberry Pi portion, the RP2040 to display like the game you're playing, its name, and that would be really cool. And I, every time I did that, it would just blow everything away. Nothing would work. And I'd have to like install the firmware and then I'd have to jump pin nine to ground and reset it. I mean, this board is a bugger to fiddle with. I mean, it, I do not care for it really. And again, I'm using it for the wrong kind of thing. I'm just being a bit of a moron using this for this project, but still it is, it is rough. I, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna buy another one of those. Okay, all right, here we are. So let me just show you what the game controller looks like now. It's the button. Oop, let me get that on screen, the button. The joystick, doot, doot, doot. the wiring into the little ESP32, and then there's a battery pack. This is the battery itself. And um, one thing I did want to show is, if I can keep this on screen, I'm sorry. Uh, one thing I did want to show is, this is an eight-way joystick. So basically, because it's a square, the joystick moves in all directions, eight directions. A lot of these little clips, unfortunately this one doesn't, but you can put them on like this, so it's a, um, more of a square, but in a diamond orientation, and that's just up, down, left, right. So there's these four triggers, left, right, up, down. But if you go slightly askew, you just triggered both. And for games like a Pac-Man, it makes it like near, nearly impossible to play Pac-Man because you really need a four-way joystick, not an eight-way. But that's fine. There's a little battery, and um, it is on, it's plugged in. Let's uh, let's take a look. See, let's play Joust, a notoriously hard game. Turn up the volume a little bit. So left and right, and then fly and whoop. There we go. This game works well. It's a very simple control. Whoop. Oh, I keep missing it. <laughs> As the lava rises, here we go. And then you gotta get the egg. Okay, you've probably seen me play this enough, but I guess the idea is it works. Oh, and I'm dead. <laughs> so I thought I would try my new fancy ESP32 Bluetooth controller with my television, and it sees it. Okay. It has paired. Okay, I've got the remote. Let's see if, uh, oh, well, look at that. I am controlling this. I was just using the, uh, just using this remote. Look at that, it's going backwards and forwards.